Hi there. This is H. Victoria Hogger Atkerson, and um, we're talking about uh, questions and comments of, from uh, listeners, from viewers, and uh, people who have written in. So one of the topics, and I got several requests about this topic that we're going to discuss today, and it's about sexual relationships. And one question was, uh, why do I write about so in, so intimately about sex? Another question a person asked said, how did I get so comfortable that I could just write about it? And she co commended me on writing about sex in such a poetic way, which I really appreciate. Thank you for that. The other question is, um, why do I include uh, sex in my writing um, so frequently? And another person who... Um, ask me a question about this topic, I wanted to know what my philosophy was and my beliefs regarding sex. And I think that they are all great questions and I'll be happy to answer them because it's one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> As you probably, if you read my books, you'll know that. Uh, my belief is that America, Americans are very puritanical in their views about sex and they do not explore it or teach it as they should, it's looked upon and frowned upon as something we should be ashamed of. And I think it, I feel just the opposite. So I, I began thinking intensely about it when I was teaching um, young girls how to take care of their bodies. And when I was teaching sex education to adolescent girls, some were adjudicated delinquent and some were not but dependent, neglected girls who grew up in the system, who had no one to ask these personal questions to. They grew up with the, um, a different view of sex. Many of these children were sexually abused as, as infants, some, and even uh, throughout their lives. So, uh, unfortunately, in our foster care system, that happens a lot to our girls, and they express that. So it was one of the subjects that I wanted to explore with them and to make them relax and get control of their bodies. Because I think that's one of the things that American women do not do. And it doesn't matter what age group. I find this in every age group, that we do not know our bodies and we do not explore um, how we feel and how we perform during a sexual act and what our responsibilities are. So that is the stimulus for my, or the motivation for me writing about sex, because I think sex is a beautiful thing, and it's one of the most uh, wonderful things that our Creator made. So it cannot be bad, and we won't, and we can allow people to always interpret it as a bad thing, or as a dirty thing, or something that is forbidden, or something that's hush hush, such, something we should never talk about. And I get this from my friends as well as young people. So people, women who are grown have had children; they don't know their bodies, and to me, that's very sad. So when I write about sexual relationships, I want to write honestly, clearly, and I also would like to explore the subject where people can look at it and learn something if they don't know. And if they do, maybe they'll feel uh, enough um, security in the fact that they can go out and find this information if they need it. There are tons and tons of books on the subject. So... I invite you to go read them. In many cultures, they teach children, especially when they move into adolescence, how to be responsible for their bodies and how they are responsible for their sexual partners and how they are to 
perform for themselves and for their own gratification. That's something we do not do in America, and it's a shame. Many African tribes take their young men away to a place in isolation and the girls in another place in isolation, and they teach them these things. And it's not frowned upon. So, and even in Samoa and all the different uh uh, countries who are more liberal in their thinking and feelings about sexual relationships, they teach their young people how to act within the framework of their own existence. And a part of that is their sexual lives, because we are sexual beings. Otherwise, God never would have put those parts there. You never would have had a clitoris or a uterus or anything, or a penis. You never would have had those things. So... We need to get a grip of that, and we need to know and respond to it responsibly. So, And in teaching our children about hygiene, we need to also teach them how to perform and to be responsible for their sexual lives. So for that reason, I think my writing about it makes it more open and honest, and it also gives people an idea that this is something that we should cherish. One of the things that I really love about uh, my my writing is that I try to connect the spiritual aspects of sex, which in America we don't do, but I think it's very important that that aspect of, of worshiping God in a sexual act is precious. One of the things that I... Uh, do when I'm traveling. I like to talk to different people to find out what their views are and also to find out what they learn as children growing up because I think it's really critical, especially with our our culture, uh, that we we put a lid on our sexual education. I think it's a shame. Our children do not benefit from it and they do not learn that their bodies are theirs and that should be respected. And they have no no control, mental control over their own bodies. And I think that's something we need to teach our children. It's not just something just down there doing nothing, waiting for somebody else to abuse. There's a purpose. And one of the things that I really love that someone told me, a little old lady in Brazil, she said, when you have sexual relationships with a person, you are worshiping God. You're touching the hand of God. When you go to heaven, that's what that's a sample of what you're gonna feel when you get to heaven and touch God's hand. Now, it's a wonderful, wonderful analogy, and I like to embrace that because it makes me open my eyes and also to see the uh the beauty in the, the relationship between a man and a woman. You when you are in the act of having sex, and check some of your uh, tribal customs in Africa, they teach this. When you are having a sexual relationship with a person, you're also worshiping God. You're touching his hand. And it's a sample, like the little lady said, a sample of what you're going to feel when you touch the hand of God. So if we teach the spiritual aspect and the divinity in the sexual act, I think we'll be much better off. There will be less sexual violence and crimes committed against children and adults. So I love to write about it because I think it needs to be done appropriately and people need to learn to be comfortable with their sexuality. So that's something that I really believe in and that I will always do. So when you read my work, it's not just uh, put there to make you uh feel good it is in some way, but it's also there to make you aware of who you are and what your purpose is on earth and what your purpose is when you join with another person. It's not just, you're not just, you know, doing this mechanical thing that makes you feel for a moment and that's it. No, you should have some basis for your relationship with a person. It should be something that's warm, something that's giving, and it should be intimate and sensuous. It should feel good. If it doesn't feel good, it's not right. And that's one of the things that young people don't know. They don't know that it's not supposed to be violent. They think that that's supposed to happen to them, and it's not, because it has been ingrained in them 
inappropriately for many years that sex and violence are close together or sex and sin or 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 partners and it's not it's sex and spiritual being sex and being a spiritual person is sex and touching God's hand so think of that I hope <laughs> when you read my books because that's the that's where I'm coming from so I hope that answers a few questions and uh just want to remind you to like this channel, like my program, and also to subscribe to it and read my books. They're on Kindle, they're at Barnes and Nobles, and um, uh, what's the other one? Amazon.com. <laughs> so you take care. Love yourself and love to you.